solutions of some differential equations. The big idea in this lesson is that if you have a differential equation, like for example this one, it's easy to solve it by putting everything that's associated with the y on one side of the equation and everything associated with the t on the other. It's easy to think about moving the, the 3y because we're, from algebra we're used to being able to just subtract a term from, from both sides and, and balancing our equation that way. The problem with that is if we just move the 3y, uh, we're, we're, we'll have to subtract it first of all. So that would leave us with dy dt minus 3y equals 10. And then when I move the dt by multiplying it by both sides, I'd have to multiply this term by it as well. And that actually introduces a dt. So we kind of have to think a little bit more creatively. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the whole right-hand side and divide by that. Actually, what I'm going to do first is multiply by dt. But when I do that, notice that I have to multiply the whole right-hand side by dt. So that kind of captures that, that expression, 3y plus 10, anyway. Now that I've done that, I can cancel my dt's on the left. And that leaves me with the equation dy equals 3y plus 10 all times dt. Now I have an expression. There's a constant here, but this expression is explicitly in terms of y. There are no t's in this one, so in this expression. So I can divide uh, both sides of my equation now by 3y plus 10. And I get this. Another way to write the left-hand side is 1 over 3y plus 10 times dt, sorry, times dy. So I have this equation. And now I can think of this simply as an equation of two differentials that, when I integrate both sides, will we'll produce a solution. So just like you can differentiate both sides of an equation or take the square root of both sides of an equation, you can integrate both sides of an equation. What this gives me here is the natural log, oops, wrong color pen, the natural log of 3y plus 10 times 1 third equals that's my left-hand side. My right-hand side is t. Notice, though, that I don't have any limits of integration on either side. I have chosen to integrate both sides of this equation, so I don't know what any limits might be. These are indefinite integrals. So I need to add plus c. And I'll do that on both sides for now, but I'll show you why you really only need one of those. But for now, we'll just... Actually, I'm going to call this c1 and c2 because they could be different. Right? Those could be different constants. And in fact, if I subtract C1 from both sides, then I'll end up with my equation looking like this. One third, the natural log of 3y plus 10 equals T plus C1 plus C2. Well, C1 plus C2, those are both constants. So this is still a constant, and I could just write plus C. And I could have done that all the way down here. I could just have left this one off and added a plus c here. Now, I promised that we would check this solution, so I'm going to do that here. I won't leave it on the screen when we're done, because I'll need space, but I, I want to double check it. We want to uh, check that the antiderivative of this function is this function. So I'm going to differentiate this function and see what I get that a derivative with respect to y, because on the left-hand side I was my, my differential is y, I'm integrating with respect to y, of the natural log, oops, I forgot my one-third, of one-third times the natural log of 3y plus 10 is equal to, if I treat this as a 
product, I get one third times the derivative of the natural log of 3y plus 10 is 1 over 3y plus 10. But by the chain rule, I have to multiply that, that by the derivative of the inside function. So I get a times 3. And then these cancel. And that leaves me with just that function there. So this is the correct antiderivative or integral of this expression here. Okay, let's get rid of that. And in fact, I think I'll write a just a plus c up here now so that we have a cleaner screen to work with. And by way of reminder, let's see, this was my original differential equation, and I was asked to find the general solution for this. I'll talk more about general solutions in a minute. Um, the thing is, this expression or this, this equation was given as though it was taken, the derivative was taken of y with respect to t. What that tells me is that the, my, my answer needs to be a function y equals where t is the variable, right? the independent variable. y is the dependent variable here and t is the independent variable. That means I need to solve this for y to have my final answer. So I'm going to play around with it a little bit. Um, let's use properties of logarithms to move that one third to this exponent position. Then I'm going to exponentiate both sides. I'm going to raise both sides to the you know, e to the power of each side. That gives me just 3y plus 10. Handwriting's really sloppy all of a sudden. 3y plus 10 to the power of 1 third equals e to the t plus c. And then if I cube both sides, I'll get, I teach math 98, math 99, math 97. So I'm, I'm in the habit, I have to say, of showing every little step. And I'm doing that because in part, uh, I don't know where you as an individual student are coming from. I don't know what your background is. I don't know how long it's been since you had algebra. I don't know how long it's been since you had calculus for that matter. Um, so I do tend to write a lot more of the steps than you might feel are necessary, but for some students, those steps would be necessary. Also, however, when you write mathematically, it's important to consider your reader. And in my case, my reader or my listener, my watcher, is a group of students whose background I do not know. When you write mathematics, your audience is me. And what you're trying to do is convince me that you know what you're doing. So it's still very much to your benefit to include as many steps as, as you feel is appropriate, not just you know, the minimum number of steps to try to prove that you're smart and you don't need to write much down. You can do it all in your head, but that to convince me, you understand what's going on. If you write the answer to a problem in two or three steps and one of those steps is wrong, I won't be able to tell exactly what happened because you haven't provided enough detail. So that's my little soapbox lecture open over for the moment. Um, I'm trying to get to why. I'm trying to solve this for why. So let's use this, um, this property here. This gives me just 3y plus 10 equals e to the power of 3 times t plus c. So 3t plus 3c. Now, the next thing I would do, if it weren't for this absolute value sign here, these, these absolute value bars, uh, would be to subtract 10 and then divide by 3 but I do have absolute value bars here. So what I'm gonna to need to do is set this equal to, I'll, do, I'll just write it down for now, but this is not, the, not actually the next step that I'm gonna take, is equal to either positive or negative e to the 3t plus 3c, right? Um, I guess I suppose I can, I can carry on uh, as I am. I have, so now let's subtract 10 from both sides. And I have 3y, equals negative 10 plus or minus e to the 3t plus 3c. 
And so y is equal to, I'll just write it as 1 third times negative 10 plus or minus e to the 3t plus 3c. So now I have an equation written in terms, uh, written as y in terms of t. But I have one more thing that I can do here. And I, I would have done it up here, except that I ended up dealing with the absolute value bars first. So I'll do it, I'll do it now. Notice that e to the 3t plus 3c can be written as e to the 3t times e to the 3c, right? But guess what? e to the 3c is a constant. e is a constant. e to a power is a constant. Uh, e to a numerical power is a constant. And c is a constant. So I'm going to call e to the 3c here capital C, I guess, for lack of anything else. That's what your textbook does as well. So let's write that. One more step here. We have one third times negative 10 plus or minus this constant here times e to the 3t. And I could further simplify that. I could factor out that c and I'd have 1 over uh, 3 times c times negative 10c, which is another constant, but it's a different constant. This this is a known constant, so I can't I can't mess with that. Whatever c is, it, it appears here, or if I divide out that c, I'm going to put this over here. If I divide out the c, then I get, factor out the c is really essentially what I'm doing here. I get 1 over 3c times negative 10c plus or minus e to the 3t. So how you how you choose to write your final answer here is kind of going to be dependent on how you're going to use it. And we don't really know at this point. This stage, we're just solving a differential equation for the sake of doing it. And so we don't really know how we're going to use this information. Um, because it's simpler and because it only contains one instance of the constant, I would probably leave it in this form unless I knew for some reason I needed to have the the, the the e term here by itself with with no unknown constant. Um, it's it's much more compact, I guess, in this form simply because the c only occurs in one place. Notice that because we had to divide through here, and we ended up with this logarithmic expression, the constant ended up being a constant multiple. It's a factor. Whereas in some cases you might have a constant, as we did up here, because we weren't finished yet. That's, that's added on, it's a term. So it depends on the form that your original differential equation takes as to whether the, the constant, uh, the unknown constant of integration ends up being a factor or, or a term that gets tacked on. Okay, one last thing here. Uh, I promised to talk a little bit about what I meant by general solution. This answer that we've come up with here is the general solution for this differential equation. And it's called that because I don't know what c is. c could be any constant. In order to figure out what c is, I need more information than I've been given here. So this is a general solution. In fact, we would say it's the general solution. If I knew what c was, then we would call that a particular solution. In order to figure out what c is, the information that I need, the additional information that I need is at least one set of conditions that tells me what a value for y is when I know a value for t. And those conditions are usually something like y of 0 equals 7. I'm just making this one up because I don't really have any context to hang it on. What this tells me is that when time is 0, or when t equals 0, the y value is 7. And that means that I could plug 0 in for t into my solution here and 7 in for y. And that leaves then just the, the c as a, an unknown value. I know what t is and I know what y is for at least one particular um, situation. And I can use that information to find c. And when I did that, actually, let's go ahead and do that. Um, I think I'll try to squeeze it in up here. 
when y is 7, it's because um, c e to the 3t, because t is 0, so that's going to make that 0. Well, e to the 0 is 1, so that gives me 7 equals 1 third times negative 10 plus or minus c times 1. And if I multiply both sides by 3, I get negative 10 plus or minus c. Uh, add 10 to both sides. So c is either plus or minus 31. And we don't know which one it is, but there are, um, we can discuss aspects of why you might uh, have one or the other or both as a possible value for c in this case here. But without this information here, I wasn't able to determine what C was. These are called initial conditions because usually it's, a situ it's a, an indication of what's happening at the initiation of the problem when time equals zero. For that reason, when you have, let me grab a highlighter here, when you have a differential equation together with initial conditions, we call that situation we call that problem an initial value problem because we have the initial values we have the initial conditions for the differential equation in other words we have more information than just the equation we have information about what was happening at a particular time so we have enough information then also to grab uh, our c value so this as it is written down here is a general solution and if i rewrite it with c in place then i would have oh i'm gonna to have to squeeze it in the middle here actually i'll tell you what i i didn't like this version anyway so i'm going to erase this one and i'll i'll write my particular solution y equals one third negative 10 plus or minus i now know c is plus or minus 31 e to the 3t and that, uh, let's highlight it, so we have, that's my particular solution. This is my general solution. They're the same, except that I know what C is. Notice that when I found, when I used the initial conditions to find C, I didn't just find C, I put it back in place, right? To say that C equals 31 is the, particular solution is incorrect. The particular solution is the same equation, but with the C in place. That's the difference, right? This is a general solution. This is a particular solution.